Okay, hello and welcome back. This video is sponsored by MPB 4x4 Independent Land Rover Specialists. They're especially independent for supplying second-hand new parts, servicing, repair and also painting in their new workshops in Keithley. The address is up here and if you live up north it's probably quite handy for you and there's a link to their website below this video. We've got to say thank you to MPB 4x4 for sending us the parts so we can continue with these tutorials. Right, so with the TD5 it only takes one type of antifreeze and corrosion inhibitor and that is the OAT which is Organic Acid Technology Antifreeze okay, which can, you can either find from Halfords or from our suppliers or uh, Miller's Oils actually make one too which is called Alpine Extended Red. You cannot use the blue or blue coal antifreeze, it's not compatible with red at all. You'll find if you'll mix it, it will turn into a jelly. The workshop manual tells you to use Havoline Extended Life Coolant, but it also says only with OAT technology. The amount of antifreeze that you use is 50%, which is 4 litres according to the TD5 data in the workshop manual. You should always top up with red and it only lasts for five years protection or corrosion inhibitor so it needs to be drained and flushed and then refilled after five years. The good thing about OAT stuff, it actually shows up as pink if you have any weeping through your hoses or any type of joint. So you can see here very clearly there is pink there, that's crystallized antifreeze. You'll find with an older vehicle, hoses will eventually perish. Now this one is a uh, at the lower end of the vehicle. It's had a hard life, as you can see, and it's come to the end of its life and it actually split as I tried to remove it. You can see that down here. At this end, this is the water pump outlet elbow. The pipe has basically just worn out through being expanded through its working life so this one needed to be changed as well as the top one very common problem on the td5 is corrosion of aluminium parts and this is the outlet from the cylinder head on the top hose it's corroded enough through to let coolant through somebody has tried to repair it by putting silicon there for a while but it doesn't work you have to replace them fairly cheap item as you've seen in uh, another video and we've actually replaced it now using a new gasket as you can see here and a serviceable clip these do wear so they're worth actually replacing from new this type of pipe is the bear mark type and it actually has a uh, plastic fitting where the bleed would be our old pipe was split down at the bottom here and a bit further along we've had a little bit of chafing and the worst part of it has been caught on one of the pulleys you can see that that has cut through also to the cords underneath which has rendered it completely useless you can see here the t-piece is also plastic now this is not a new idea and we're trying this one out because it does actually seem to be constructed quite well the OEM, which is this one, which also is like the Brit part, is vulcanized and it doesn't really make any difference. These are very reliable hoses. The one thing I like about the bear marked hose is actually got an extra coating for where they know it's going to chafe. And this happens to be on the air conditioning pipe. You can see that here. OK. And also we have a clip on there which can wear the rubber. So that gives it a bit of an extended life. So here's the water pump outlet elbow and you can see the pipe attached to it and it's been weeping. Okay, so inspection of hoses, usually if you're seeing a bulge before the clip, okay, and the hose looks actually quite weak or it's only got any cuts in it at all, then it's unserviceable, especially on jointed ends where corrosion can happen. These hoses can fail under pressure, so keep that in mind. The specialist clips that they seem to use more and more on vehicles, these need to be pulled open. Now I'm using a pipe wrench here, which is quite a rusty one because I use this for plumbing at home. And basically you stretch it, put it over your hose, and I'll just slip there, put your union pipe over, and then drag the clip over it. That's basically the easiest way to do it if you can see what I'm doing here. This tool's okay for exposed ends. 
However, it is fairly limiting. Now, in this case, this one kept slipping off because it's a not a very good tool. Best tool you can get is the hose clip pliers, especially for the TD5, which you can find from a 4 before or 4 bcouk Link will be below this video on the YouTube description. An expensive, robust alternative is available from Sealy Tools. Right, so to drain the fluid out of a TD5, there is actually a, a drain plug on one of the radiator hoses at the front of the engine. There will be one of those inspection hatches so you can access it and you can use a 13mm spanner on it. The best piece of equipment I do have in my workshop is this oil drainer, and this also is from 4b.co.uk or 4 b 4 before and basically you can, once you've drained it, pour it into a container. Right, so back to our OAT antifreeze collection, right? So we've got the Halfords one here, which I've put in my wife's car, and this is the Miller's Extended Life Red, which I'm using in this vehicle. Okay, basically this is the only stuff you can use. Now, if you were to use this in something like a 300 TDI, you might find you might have problems with the metalwork, so use what is advised. So basically, I've drained the system, flushed it, and then I'm topping this up with four liters of red, first of all, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put something like four liters of water in here as well. You won't get it all in in one go, it just takes time to get through to the system. You also, on this top hose, you have a bleed screw, which you can undo once it's full. It should actually start dripping out of there. Now, I squeeze the hose. There's not enough fluid in there to be filled up to the top hose. So basically, I'll put some more fluid in. And it's just a matter of keep filling it until it comes out. What I prefer to do is to run the engine and make sure that the fluid is flowing through. Remember, you do this cold. Never do it with hot coolant. Okay, so I'll just have a little wipe up there and basically what we're gonna do with this, now we have a coolant flowing right the way through the system, we can stop the engine and then set up a, a coolant pressure system tester. Now what this does basically is to pressurize the system and then we can watch to see if there's any leaks. Basically, 15 PSI is about the maximum you want to put a cooling system pressure under. Any more than that will cause damage. Right, so basically with the TD5, you have a um, excess leak off here, which in this header tank is actually a bit of odd. And the header tank cap is also damaged. We need to replace that. What I have here is a special cap tester specifically for this vehicle and it's designed the same way. You could use one of these, which is from um, Sealy Tools. This expander isn't actually that good, but it works. Right, so the pressure 15 PSI, basically what we do is pump it up to 15 PSI, so we've got the pressure in the system, and then wait to see if the pressure drops. So that's quite a simple test. Basically, you go up for a cup of coffee and a cigarette, come back and see if the pressure's dropped. Now, with this TD5 expansion tank, this has a leak off, and I've had to um, bypass it or bring it back on itself to block it off because I was losing fluid out of that when it's pressurized. That's this one here. Okay, so I've had my coffee and I've had my roll up and basically I come back to it after about 15 minutes and what we have here is, is bang on 15 psi so there is no leaks in the system whatsoever which I'm dead chuffed about because if it did lose pressure then it would be having a leak. Now I'm just going to let some of the pressure out of it. If it was dropping like this you'd have a massive leak. If it dropped over time slowly you would have a, a smaller leak. And if it didn't pressurise at all, then basically there's something seriously wrong. So that would be uh, find it out and rectify it and pressure test again. Right, so I'm going to get the level correct. And you know where the level is on a TD5. If you don't, you should know. And I'll put the knackered cap back on for now. Basically this cap, I'll just screw it off and show you. The, um, the cap's completely knackered, so the system wouldn't have been pressurised, so you wouldn't have known if there was any problems with it. But basically, if you don't have pressure in a system, then it won't work efficiently, and you can see how bad this cap actually is. So this will get replaced when I've ordered one. 
Next job we have to do, if you listen to this vehicle very carefully, you will hear something amiss with the steering. This is with the steering turned from lock to lock. Now we've also noticed that the uh, level of the power steering fluid has actually leaked, so this is the next job we have to do.